If you're making the switch to electric, there is one aspect of ownership that might seem a little baffling at first. I'm talking about charging. The reason why it sounds more complicated than it should is just because there are a number of different ways of doing it. But the good news is that all of them are simple, straightforward, once you understand how they work. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the different ways which you can charge the battery on an electric car, from the fastest to the very slowest. <laughs> but before we start, here's a little nugget of electric car info for you. Whenever you see the letters KWH in relation to an EV, then it means kilowatt hour. And that refers to the size of the battery. So in simple terms, this is the fuel tank of an electric car. The higher the figure, then the bigger the battery and the more fuel, i.e. electricity, you can get inside it. Today, I'm driving a Hyundai Ioniq, one of the most popular electric cars on the market and a great introduction into the world of EVs. It has a 38 kilowatt hour battery, which is pretty common size for an EV. So if you're choosing a car with a bigger or a smaller battery, the recharging times I'll give you in this video will change accordingly. Most of the time, you'll probably be charging at home or in the office, which is great because that means your car's working for you, filling up while you're getting on with your day or perhaps having a long nap. But if you're going on a longer journey, I would highly recommend you do a little bit of planning around which public charging station you're going to use. And there are some great tools out there to help you. Um, one of which is an app called ZapMap. There's another app called PlugShare. And this highlights the location, the status, and the cost of all the public chargers across the UK. Plus, sometimes it includes things like live information about whether that charger is being used and how long it's been used for. Well, this lovely machine is a fine specimen of a public charger. Now, the output of this, which is how quickly it delivers power into the car battery, varies from charger to charger. If you need to know what the power outage is, you can either check an app or read it on the sign. This is 150 kilowatt, which means it's a rapid charger, king of the jungle when it comes to chargers, and they're spread up and down the country. This is the kind of charger you're gonna be looking for if you need to stop mid journey and fill up your car as quickly as possible. Power outputs range from 50 kilowatts right up to 350 kilowatts. But bear in mind that not all EVs can actually charge at the higher rates and you'll be limited to the speed at which your car can take power. Now here you can see we've got two different options for charging points. There is also a third one. We've got the CCS, the Chadamo, and then there is a Type 2 as an option as well. I'll just show you how different they look. That's sort of one type of nozzle, which actually is very common for the Nissan Leaf and also black cabs. And then this is the CCS, which we're gonna use for the Hyundai Ioniq. Once you followed the instructions on the screen and set up payment, you let the machines do their magic. Our Ionic will take around 50 minutes to charge from 10 to 80%, but you can stop charging once you have enough juice in the battery to complete your journey. A charger like this will add around 130 miles of range per hour. These units might be the fastest ones to use, but of course that means they're the most expensive. This unit costs between 20 and 40 pence per kilowatt to use. So an 80% chance will cost you between five and 10 pounds. Now that is of course still cheaper than petrol, but it costs more than charging at home. So just take what you need to get you home. For most of us, home is where we'll probably do the majority of our charging. Think of it a little bit like having a petrol station right outside your house. Home chargers come with two power outputs, 3.6 kilowatt or 7.2 kilowatt. Now some house electrics aren't suitable for the higher output and all units need to be installed professionally to make sure it's safe. They typically cost between 450 and 600 pounds to supply and install, and that includes the government grant discount of 350 pounds. Now, they come with the option of having a tethered connection, which is where the cable is permanently attached to the charger, or an untethered, which is where you plug and unplug every time. Now, that's quite similar to a public charging point that you might find at a supermarket or a station car park. Now, as for charging time, that rapid charger that we saw earlier, 
150 kilowatts, whereas this home charger is a 7.2 kilowatt charger. So a very big difference there. And that means that it will fully charge this Ionic in six hours. Other home chargers could be as low as a 3.6 kilowatt charger, and it would do the same in around double that, so 12 hours. Now, don't worry, it does sound like a long time, but most of us sleep for at least six hours a night, right? And that's when the charging can be done. All new home chargers are now smart with data connections, which means you can monitor your usage via an app or web page. Not only are home chargers the easiest to use, they're also the cheapest. Filling up this Ionic from empty to fuel will cost about a fiver at any standard daytime rates. And if you have a tariff that gives you cheap overnight power, it can cost as little as £1.50 for a full charge. And finally, we have what is known in the electric vehicle world as the granny charger, but I actually prefer to call it the sit back, relax and have as many cocktails as you want charger because you're not going to be driving anywhere that evening. This is a very slow charger, but it is brilliant for emergencies. And if you don't have access to any other charging point, it is, of course, just your standard three pin plug, which will plug into any socket at home. But be warned, it can take up to 19 hours to charge this Hyundai Ionic. And so a bigger car with a bigger battery is gonna take even longer. So there we have it, the options for charging your electric car. They may seem daunting at first, but hopefully you quickly get used to them and you never have to fill up with fuel again.